Who could forget the Ethiopian famine of 1984? When world vision first arrived in the Ansokia Valley, many people were dying each day, and the vast floor of the valley was a dust bowl. A major emergency relief and feeding program was mounted to save lives in the short term. But Ethiopia and the Ansokia Valley had been in the grip of drought many times before. World Vision knew that without long-term sustainable change, it would be again. Working with the communities of the Ansokia Valley, World Vision began a major redevelopment program to prevent the possibility of another famine devastating the Ansokia Valley and its people. A bridge was constructed to access the valley's richness. World Vision specialists recognized the potential of the alluvial geology of the valley with its rich topsoils and shallow water table. 9.7 million seedlings were planted as part of a reforestation program, creating a unique microclimate with the ability to withstand drought. Vegetables and new varieties of sorghum were planted. Varieties that mature in three months instead of nine were introduced. Springs were kept, ensuring clean drinking water. Improved irrigation and agricultural methods were taught and passed on from community to community. Projects were launched for vast fruit tree plantations, fish farms, rice paddies and seedling nurseries. The positive change brought about by World Vision has impacted the lives of so many in the valley at both a community and an individual level. The name of the game for the bottom line for me was very simple. I have got to figure out a way to generalize that knowledge. How do you grow fish in the desert? What do you do when there's nothing you can do? When people are dying of hunger? And that culmination kind of came together in the famines of the middle 70s and middle 80s. And I went to a particular valley. You saw the videotape of Ansokia. It's just one of thousands of valleys similar. But it was a scene of the worst human carnage imaginable. The basic protein deficiency was nitrogenous in nature. It's based upon a simple little nitrogen atom. And if you understood how nitrogen behaves itself, you can create food anywhere. The basic process is this, very basic. You find a loose sort of nitrogen wandering around. You nail that puppy down so that nitrogen sticks around for a period of time. And if you can uh, create it in a setting that's bacterial in nature, then it's forever available. That's all. It's very simple. It doesn't take rocket science. And so the best way? Fish. Aha. Fish. And there was a man, you know, a couple thousand years ago that, got, that saw the advantage of feeding fish to a lot of people. <laughs> well, hey, listen, he was right. I also discovered that it takes less water to grow fish than it does a crop of dry land wheat. Now that, that should shake up the bloodstream a little bit when you realize that it does indeed take less water to grow fish. You can grow three times the protein with fish than you can yeah. with grain. And people quite often ask this, especially representative from, uh, from arid countries, uh, say, well, that's all fine and good as long as you got some water. But look at us, we don't have any water. No, not true. You can actually go into any area, and you might be at the tail end of a, of a hundred year drought. You can actually create water. It, it, it's a little messy. I mean, it takes a little while, and you got to work a little bit. You might get sweaty armpits at it. When you account for all uses of energy, including the planting, the harvesting, the processing, there's a net gain in protein. So I could feed people. They had enough energy to work a hand pedal, to drive the electricity, to drive the pumps. It's a long chain event. It didn't just occur. You know, Angel didn't bring it down to me. But when you organize that, that thinking process to create free nitrogen and make protein out of it, it is not improbable. It's not miraculous. It's just plain old hard work. That's all there is to it. 
the most valuable asset on the face of the earth in human nature is are women. Women do 95% of the work on the face of the earth. And <laughs> okay, men, don't get so angry at me. But hey, the reality, that's the reality, folks. It cannot be separated from the necessity to spin off experts in doing that. And you don't start at the nation's land grant universities. What you start is, is the local people right there that have grown up with the dirt under their fingernails. They have an intuitive understanding of the zone. They just have not been trained. And they're more intelligent than I am. They, they will roll your socks up with how well they can solve problems. So give them the tools. So what we need then is a series of instructional events that equips people to solve their own bloody problems right then and there. I want them to be self-supporting. I don't want them to remember me. If they remember I did something for them, what good have I done them? It is an art. It's an art more than it is a science. I'm always struck by how artistic it really is. Now, I'm a junior make-believe artist, and I love watercolors. My journals are, are illustrated with my watercolors because it is so much an art. And you can't teach it in a lab. You, I can't teach in a lab how to slice off the top of a carrot and look at it and then taste it and then smell it and tell me how that carrot is sick. You can't do that. It's an artistic thing that you need to be there and do it. Give me a poet, a musician. They make great agriculturalists. Give me a musician and he's in tune with the cadence of life. And it's just striking how quickly and excited people get when they see the little flagellariums growing and they see and they look at the respiratory tissues of a sick tilapia and they say, aha, I can feel what's, what the granulations are. That little guy needs a little more selenium. So come on, Henry, get some more selenium in there. And that fish just blossoms. Now don't let people carry off that waste because the waste is more valuable than the food you're generating. And that's been a difficult lesson through the, through the years that I've been working with foreign governments is don't waste it. Don't waste it. Use it. There isn't a waste created that you can't make food out of. That's all I have to say, folks.